Hello, it's been a long time since I last uploaded a video, I've been a bit busy. Well I'm going to start uploading some existing video tutorials from the Spanish channel, on this English channel as some of you have been asking me for some time now, however I'll make a new tutorial with updated and improved code. Well, this time I will show you how to make a dashboard with a connection to a database and an attractive appearance. In this example, the data source points to a store, so we will show the performance of order, revenue and products in a range of dates, either by the current date, the last 7 days, the current month, or a custom date range. In theory, a data dashboard is an essential component in a system and in the user experience, since it allows monitoring the general state of a business or process, basically it is an information management tool that is used to track, analyze and show key performance indicators metrics and data points. Dashboards should not be confused with reports, as they have different purposes and perspectives. In summary mode, the tutorial will consist of five parts. Create the database, establish the connection, create the model, which will take care of data access and business logic, then create the user interface and finally set the model data to the form. Ok, let's start with the tutorial. Firstly in SQL Server, we will create this database of 5 related tables, the products, orders, order items, customers and suppliers table, I already have it created, I will leave you a download link of the complete script so that you can simply execute it and thus create the database, the tables, the relationships, and the data insertion. This is optional, you can use the data source you want, however it must contain data with current dates. This database has dates inserted from the year 2020 to April of this year 2022. Ok, once we have the database, we go to Visual Studio, create a Windows Form project in C Sharp. Then we add a folder for the database connection, then we add an abstract class. It is very important to have the components and functions of a software project organized. For this we can use some design pattern or architecture or we can just organize in a general and intuitive way like I'm doing now. We declare a read-only field of type string for the database connection string. In the constructor, we initialize the connection string, the database server, in my case local, since I have a default instance installation on my computer. We indicate the database, and we connect using Windows credentials, or through a username and password if you have one. Finally we create a protected method of type SQL connection to establish and return the connection to the database. For those just getting started with object-oriented programming, and abstract classes are used primarily for inheritance and polymorphism purposes, commonly used to define some common attribute or behavior for a group of subclasses, but also to ensure that the class cannot be created since in some cases it does not make sense to create an instance of the base class, it is also advisable to create instances only when necessary and opportune. On the other hand, the access modifier is allowed the encapsulation pillar to be applied, this private field can only be accessed by the same class, in addition to being read-only and can only be initialized by the constructor. This protected method can only be accessed by subclasses that inherit this base class. By thinking in the above ways, the pillar of abstraction is being applied. Abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism are the four basic pillars of object-oriented programming. Alright, now we add another folder for the models, in it we add a class for the dashboard. We convert to a public class and inherit the database connection class. For this we must add the reference to the DB namespace. We start by declaring the fields and properties to generate a dashboard. This requires a start date, an end date, and the number of days in the date range. Ok, now we declare the necessary properties to store the result of the queries to the database. For example, the total number of customers, we set the set taxes or to private, 
since for common sense and security, only this class should be able to modify the value, however, it can be obtained from anywhere it is instantiated, again it enters in action the pillar of abstraction and encapsulation. We continue to declare properties for the total number of suppliers and products. Well, now we declare a property for best selling products, in this case it must be of type list, since the result has several rows and columns, to generate the list we can reuse some existing class, create of new class or structure with two properties, or we can use the key value pair structure included in .NET. We do the same for low stock products. In the same way for the list of gross revenue, however, this result can have hundreds or thousands of rows, so it is not affordable to show it in a chart control, so we will modify and group the result according to the number of days in the date range, whether by hours, days, weeks, months or years, using link operations, but the key value pairs structure doesn't work very well in that sense, so we'll create a custom structure to group and format the gross revenue list. All right, so we finally declare a property for the total number of order, total revenue, and total profit. In the constructor, we can initialize the fields and properties, however, the data will change constantly, so it is better to initialize or assign them in the corresponding methods. We then define the following private methods, a method to get the total number of customers, suppliers and products. Using the using statement, we define and assign the connection. Remember that the get connection method is in the base class DB connection. Continuing, we open the connection to the database and create a SQL command object to execute transactions or stored procedures. We reference the data SQL client assembly to use the SQL data provider. We establish the command connection. First, we will obtain the total number of customers, for this we simply execute a query to count the number of rows, to make writing easier and faster and avoid compilation problems in the future, it is recommended to write the query in the same database manager. So, using the count function, we select the number of rows from the customers table. As a result there are 91 customers, if it is correct, we simply copy the query. We assign the text command, execute the command and assign the result to the corresponding property. It is worth mentioning that there are many different methods to execute an SQL command. Each one has different purposes, in this case we will use the execute scalar method, since it executes a query and returns the first column and row. This is very convenient for our case, since we only have one result. Also this method is much lighter than running a reader that returns many rows. For the result of this method it is necessary to convert to the corresponding data type. We do similarly for the total number of suppliers, products and orders. If you want you can create a single stored procedure and return the result in output parameters or in a table, it's up to you whether to use transact SQL or stored procedures.
In case of the total number of orders, the table has a date field, so the query will have a condition to count rows in a given date range. To make it easier to write my queries, here I have defined a parameter for the start date and another for the end date. Well, in this date range there are 25 orders, keep in mind that this query only counts how many orders have been made, regardless of how many and what type of products have been sold. Alright, now we need to declare and set the from date and to date parameters. It is very important to use parameters instead of concatenation in Transact SQL queries. By using parameters we avoid SQL injection, it avoids problems in the data format, mainly in the date time type, and finally it makes it easier to create the queries, since we do not have to worry about concatenating and putting the single quotes carefully. It is also recommended to indicate the data type of the parameter, as this prevents the server from working to match and convert the data type according to the data type of the column. Well, that's about it for getting the total number of items. Now we define another private method to get the order performance. We copy the previous code and we are left only with the definition of the connection and the command. Before continuing with the query, we are going to initialize the corresponding properties for this case. Well, let's continue. We establish the text command. Here we will obtain the gross revenue group by date and a date range. Then we select from the order table, where the order date is from date and to date, we group by date, and select the date and sum the total amount of the group. Alright, similarly to the previous method, we declare and set the from date and to date parameters. We declare an implicit variable and in it we execute the command in reader mode. This method returns an SQL data reader, which allows reading a stream of rows from a database. And while the reader is open no other operations can be performed until the reader is closed, since SQL connection is busy servicing the reader. Ok, now we define a list of key and value pairs of the type date time and decimal, to store the result of the query. Using the while statement, we execute the read method of the reader, and while it continues to read, we add the rows from the reader to the result list. We get the value of the first column and convert to the corresponding data type, in the same way for the second column. It is worth mentioning that the ordinal value of the column starts at zero, you can also get the value through the column name. However, it is more cumbersome to access the column through the name, since it has to perform a search to find it, that is why it is it is advisable to access the column by the position number, and that applies to any type of collection.
Well, we are also going to take advantage of the cycle to add the total of the revenue and profits. In the case of profits, in the database I do not have the purchase price of the products, so I am going to assume that the earnings are 20%. Finally we close the reader. As I said at the beginning, this list of order revenue can have hundreds or thousands of results and it is feasible for us to show it in the data graph, therefore we will group the result in the list of gross revenue, either by hours, days, weeks, months or years, depending on the number of days in the date range, for this we will use link operations. However, I don't have the record of the hours in the date. As a result the demonstration will not be possible, so I am going to skip grouping by hours, and I will simply pass the result to the revenue list, and I will give the corresponding format to the date, but I'll leave the full code for grouping by hours and days in the video description. I'm inspired by thirst, I'm inspired by worth. I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired, you first. I write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never did shit, I know it hurts. Something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this shit. Tell me that I can and I won't. That's what got me the most. Fuck your lies, I'll do what I want. The string method of the date time class allows you to convert the date value to a string. In addition to being able to give a custom format, you can read the Microsoft documentation for more information on date and time format strings. Alright, now let's start grouping the result using link. First, we will group the result by weeks, as long as the date range is less than or equal to 92 days or 3 months. Then the list of gross revenue will be equal to the result table grouped by weeks. For this we use the cultural information class, also called regional configuration. This class provides information about the culture, such as the language, the calendar, the order of classification of the strings and the formatting of dates and numbers. Which in this case allows us to obtain the week number of the year. Well, having grouped the list of orders by weeks, we store the result in an identifier, then project it into a new object of the same type as the gross revenue list. Optionally we can concatenate the word week to the week number, and sum the total amount of the group. Finally we convert the list. We do similarly to group by months. If the number of days is less than or equal to two years, we group and format the result by months. Up over black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's had a bad. After her, there ain't no coming back. Wanna take a run at that? I think she's feeling me. Turn it up a few degrees. Optionally, we can make another format to show only the name of the month if the number of days is equal to a year. So we define a field of type Boolean to determine if the number of days equals a year. Now in date, if it is a year, we only extract the month, for this we use the substring method, as parameters we indicate, that it extracts from position 0 until it finds a blank space. If you placed another date separator, for example a slash, you must also indicate the slash here. If the condition is not met, we simply set the value as set in the format. Very good. 
Now finally, if none of the above conditions are met, that is, the date range exceeds two years, we group the result by years. Well that's all, on the web page I will leave the complete code to also group by hours and days using link. Now we create another private method to get the performance of the products. We initialize the list property of the best selling products and low stack products. In the same way as the previous one, using the using block we create the connection and the SQL command. It is very important to use the using statement since we ensure that any object that implements the disposable interface is correctly disposed as soon as it fulfills its objective and does not require explicit code to ensure this happens. For example, in the case of the SQL connection, once the transaction completes, the connection object will be disposed and closed without the need to explicitly call the close method, and this will happen even if an exception is thrown. Well. First we will get the 5 best selling products in the specified date range, then in the database manager we perform the following query, select from the order item table, join the product table by product ID, and also we join the order table using the order ID, where the order date is between the start date and end date and group on the product name. Finally we select only the first 5 rows. We show the product name column and we sum the number of products in the order item. This query will not return the products with the most to order yet, since it is not ordered by the sum of the product quantity, so we must order it by the quantity column. By default it is order descending. So we change the descending to show from highest to lowest and thus obtain the best selling products. You can select the number of products you want, in my case getting the top 5 is enough. We declare the parameters for the date range. In this method we will do two queries, so we declare a field for the SQL data reader to reuse later. Well, we execute the query in the data reader. We declare the while loop to read the rows of the query and add it to the list of top products. We close the SQL data reader to release it and be able to do another query on the same connection. As I mentioned before, while the reader is open, no other operations can be performed until the reader is closed, since SQL connection is busy servicing the reader. Alright, now we get the low stock products, in this case my alert level will be when the products are below 6 stocks, you can choose the quantity you want. So, we select the product name and stock column from the products table where the stock is less than or equal to 6 and the product is not discontinued. Well, there were only 4 low stock products, however, as I said, you can choose the minimum stock alert you want, for example 10. There are now 41 products with stock below 10 stock, but I think 6 is a considerable stock for a small neighborhood store. The minimum stock alert will depend on the size of the business. Got 
All right, so we run the query on the data reader. Through a while loop, we read the rows of the query and add it to the list of understuck products, and finally we close the data reader. Okay, that's all for the database queries, now we'll define a public method to load the data using these private methods. As parameters, the start date and end date. We assign the date parameters to the date fields, and get the number of days in the date range. We call the private methods to get the data from the database. Very well, with this we would be finishing creating the data dashboard model, however, on many occasions a user, unconsciously, due to boredom or stress, tends to press a button constantly without stopping for a long time, and I include myself. So that will make this method run constantly, therefore the queries to the database will also be done every second. And that will slow down the database server a bit, as long as it has multiple connections, but if it's a local database, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Even so, we will limit the operation so as not to constantly execute it in the same time interval. So, here we add a condition so that the code is executed only when the date range parameters are different than the date range fields. However, these dates are a date and time structure, therefore there will always be a difference of seconds, as a result operations can still be executed every second. Then, we will modify the end date to set a fixed second, and thus the date and time have a difference by minutes and allow the queries to be executed once a minute since it would practically be the same query. Here we establish the fixed second of time, I recommend establishing 59 seconds to obtain all the related data in the date and time range, since when registering an order, it is done with the exact hour minute and second. Of course this only influences when you use a date time field. Well, doing this type of the validations and restrictions, we can also make the method return a boolean value to determine if the data has been refreshed and thus also refresh the form or not. Optionally we print a message in the console to know if the code is running correctly. For example, date and not refreshed because it is the same query or the time interval difference is very short. I recommend using these types of messages, as they help you determine if your code is running as planned, as well as help you identify and fix a problem faster. Alright, that's it. Now we go to the form to show the model data on the screen. First we will add all the necessary components to visualize the model data. Now the gist. For the queries to work we need to add two datetime pickers to assign the dashboard date range, we set the name and optionally the date format. Then we add buttons to get analytics for last 30 days, this month, today or a custom date.
Now we add a panel with labels to show the total number of orders, total revenue and total profit. Then we add a chart control to show the list of gross revenue, and another to show the list of five top products, customizing the appearance through the properties as we like. We added another panel with labels to show the total number of customers, suppliers and products. I'm inspired by thirst, I'm inspired by worth. I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired you first, I'll write a second, third verse. About the lies you go disperse, you never did shit, I know it hurts. Something deep inside won't let me quit, I swear that I'm inspired. Finally we add a panel and a data review to show the list of low stock products. Well, once the form has been designed, we go to the form code. We declare a field for the dashboard model. In the constructor, we set the default date range for the data dashboard, for example, the last 7 days. So, the value of the start date picker control will be equal to today's date subtracted by 7 days. And the value of the end date picker control will be equal to the date and time of now. We also select the button for the last 7 days so that it has a type of highlight. Then we instantiate the model. And finally we call a method to load the data into the form, this method doesn't exist, so we generate it. Well, in the load data method, we call the load data method of the model. This method returns a boolean value, which determines if the data has been refreshed or not, and as I commented in this one then, we will also make the form view load the data in the controls only when it is necessary or the model has changes, since it would not make sense to refresh the form if the data is the same. So, we declare a variable and in it we call the method load data from the model, as parameters we send the value of the start date and end date control. Well, we define a condition, if the refresh data field is true, we load or refresh the form data. It is optional to explicitly compare a true value, we can use the short way, just like for the false value, using one of the other depends on the tastes of each one, however, there are still people who do not know the short version or are used to the explicit version. Ok, now, we set the model data to the form components. Let's start with the text of the labels. For example, the text of the number orders label will be equal to the number of orders property of the model. And so we assign each data to the corresponding controls. Now we set the data source for the chart of gross revenue by period on the chart of 5 best selling products. 
sneeze I'm addicted to her, need her touching me Cause she got a bad little waist And we tearing down this place Off the liquor that we chase Cause amigos to the face Baby, I don't need no space Coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make Everything just fade away Cause she's like sex, drugs, cocaine, vice, so In the case of charts it is necessary to specify the column of the series to link the data of the values of the X and Y axes. In this case, the data source of the chart is a list of the revenue by date structure, has a date member that will be the data source for the X axis of the series, and a total amount member which will be the data source for the Y axis of the series. The same goes for the list of key value pairs, there is the key member and the value member. Ok, let's continue. If you want, you can set the number of the member column instead of the name of the member column. Finally we call the data bind method to force the chart view to refresh with the data source. We do the same way for the chart of the best selling products. It is worth mentioning that the data bind method does not need to be invoked when setting a single data source, that is, you only need to set and show the data once without changing the data. Finally we establish the data source of the data grid view of the products low in stock. Optionally, we print messages to determine that it is working correctly. Alright, let's test the app. In the data dashboard it should show us the performance analysis and metrics for the last 7 days. The default button is highlighted correctly, and the data source is set correctly in the form components. To corroborate that, these are the impressions of the message we wrote. Alright, now we'll refresh the dashboard based on these buttons, either this month, the last 30 days or a custom date range. I'll also change the text of the columns in the data grid view, since it doesn't make sense for them to be named that. Well, we go to the form and subscribe to the click event of each button. Let's start with the button today. Here we simply set the start date value to today, and the end date value to now. Finally we call the load data method. However, for aesthetic reasons. We will make the date pickers in the OK button of the custom date disabled, this to give the behavior of the custom date range and show the selected date range. But even he couldn't learn how to contain it Her high heels make a damn good statement There is no replacement of body by state Alright, we continue by subscribing to the click event of the buttons and setting the corresponding date range Her high heels make a damn good statement There is no replacement of body by state she got a bad little waist and we tearing down this place Off the liquor that we chase Got some egos to the face Baby, I don't need no space Coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make Everything just fade away Cause she's like sex, drugs, cocaine, vice So insane, jealous of the clothing That she wears up on a tight frame All game, no shame Baby, came here to play I feel like an addict cause she's sex, drugs For the case of the custom date button we simply re-enabled the custom date state pickers and OK button. And on the OK button, we call the load data method. Okay. Great, everything works fine as well as the limitations we set, that is, 
does not allow to refresh the data in the same minute or constantly. However, that is optional. You can remove the conditions if you want to refresh the data in real time or every second. Alright, that's all for now. The video got pretty long so I'll show you how to customize the appearance of the dashboard in an upcoming video, so it looks like this. Well, until the next video.